In this video, I'm going to explain what kind of tablets were used by the ancient Egyptians. Do you want to know how the ancient Egyptians noted their daily tasks and grocery items? If yes, then you have landed on the right video, as in this video you will get information about why Ostraka were called Egyptian tablets, what kind of language was used in the ancient Egyptian notepads, where these notepads are preserved, and what kind of information do we receive from them. So, stay tuned to the end of the video, and before diving into the video, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and hit the bell icon. Since the beginning of literature, writing things has been an essential practice all across the world. Several archaeologists had discovered samples of written pieces of work. Ancient Egypt's most important finding was Ostraka, which are known today as ancient Egyptian notepads. Let's have a quick review of what is Ostraka. Thousands of years ago, written helpmeets were an important part of daily life for Egyptian people. Ancient Egyptians utilized Ostraka, which were clay fragments with writing on them, as a type of notepad to keep track of anything from grocery lists to schoolwork and trade records. Ostraka were cheaper and more convenient than papyrus, which is a thick paper-like material that was employed for writing purposes in ancient times. It was produced from the papyrus plant's pith. Ostraka is better explained by the Egyptologist Christian Leitz in these words. There are names of months, numerals, arithmetic problems, grammatical exercises, and a bird alphabet in which each letter is associated with a bird whose name begins with that letter. People engraved words into the shards, according to researchers. The people of Egypt wrote on Ostraka by using the reed or hollow stick having ink on the tip. For what purposes were Ostrakan used? In ancient Egypt, Ostraka were used for a number of purposes. Ostraka were used to write messages and make rough sketches for paintings. Students in scribal schools used Ostraka to practice writing. The administrators used them to write notes, keep track of products, and calculate taxes. They were also used to make devotional offerings to their gods and the dead by the ancient Egyptians. Why Ostraka was more preferred than papyrus? When it comes to Ostraka, one could wonder why someone would write on such a substance, especially in Egypt, the country of papyrus. The reasons behind this are quite simple. Ostraka were inexpensive and easy to find material. Remains of broken jars, as well as other vessels, were used on an ongoing basis in ancient Egypt to record shopping lists and teach students how to draw and write and copy literature. Of course, because pottery was widely utilized in daily life, shattered pieces could be found in every settlement. You might be thinking, what kind of Ostraka pottery was used? The majority of the vessels were amphorae, particularly amphorae bodies, even though other types of vessels such as jars, cups, and plates were also employed. So how were different Ostraka discovered? Over 18,000 Ostraka were discovered in the ancient city of Anthribis by a team from the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and Germany's University of Tübingen roughly 2,000 years ago. The Ostraka were discovered among a complex of multi-story buildings with stairs and vaults to the west of the main excavation site. Let's have a view of the different Ostrakan that have been discovered. Number one, discovery of large Ostrakan in Deir el Medina. Some Ostraka were quite large, even though many were little and simply carried brief remarks or illustrations. Thousands of sketches in black and red ink on huge limestone flakes were discovered at the workman's village near Deir el Medina, and a large Ostrakan inscribed with the story of Sinuhe was discovered in the tomb of the craftsman Senegem at Deir el Medina. Number two, discovery of medical Ostrakan in Deir el Medina. Ostraka from Deir el Medina also offers an interesting insight into ancient Egyptian medical care. Medical therapy, prayer, and magic were used to treat injuries and illnesses and were written on Ostraka. Physicians would prescribe medications that they would most likely prepare themselves using recipes written on Ostraka. Professional practitioners could use magical spells in the case of snake bites or scorpion stings and remedies written on Ostrakan were passed to other people as well. Number three, discovery of dream Ostraka. 
Another noteworthy find was a series of records known as the Dream Ostraka from a catacomb in Sakara, which were discovered among countless other smaller Ostraka. These are records of clients' dreams who came to or of Sabenitos, a scribe who provided advice based on dream interpretation. Number four, discovery of trade Ostraka. The Ostraka having details of trade matters were also found in the Athribis. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry's Supreme Council of Antiquities, tells Ahram El Aref that this was a very important discovery since it provides light on the economics and trade in Athribis throughout history. The text discloses the financial transactions of the people who lived in the neighborhood, who bought and sold wheat and bread. Number five, discovery of Ostraka in the city of Athribis. According to a release from the University of Tubingen, while most of the Ostraka discovered in Anthribis include writing, the team also discovered pictorial Ostraka portraying animals such as scorpions and swallows, humans, geometric figures, and deities. A larger number of Ostraka were found in the ancient city of Anthribis. Most of the Anthribis fragments belong to an ancient school. Over a dozen of the shards contain writing patterns that the researchers suspect were used as a kind of punishment for naughty kids. This was like an activity in which they were compelled to type lines over and over again. The language scripts of ancient Ostraka fragments. Around 80% of the Ostraka fragments are written in Demotic, a type of administrative writing popular during Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy VIII's reign, 81 to 59 BCE and 55 to 51 BCE. According to archaeologists, Greek is the second most represented script, with hieroglyphics, heretic, Arabic, and Coptic also showing up and indicating Athribis's multicultural heritage. But according to the language program of ancient Egypt, I came to know about the four stages of Egyptian languages that have progressed during the past thousand years, and I'm going to give the detail of each successive language stage of Ostraka. Hieroglyphic Script, the first Ostraka script. Ancient Egyptian was written as hieroglyphic script, which uses symbols that resemble humans, animals, and natural and man-made items, but indicate consonantal and semi-vowel phonemes, clusters of phonemes, and classifiers. From roughly 3200 BCE to 2600 BCE, the first hieroglyphic texts were comprised primarily of names, labels, and short narratives with little grammar. Ancient Egyptian Ostraka were written in hieroglyphs and are better known for their pyramid texts, which are funerary texts carved inside royal burial chambers in pyramids and autobiographies carved in private tombs. Heretic, the second Ostraka script. Middle Egyptian was written in heretic, a script that uses reduced, cursive copies of hieroglyphic characters and was developed to be written swiftly and easily on papyrus or Ostraka with ink and brush. The content of ancient letters, official papers, accounts, some literature, and the heretic scripts inscribed on Ostraka were used to convey a representation of the spoken language from roughly 1500 BCE to 700 BCE. Demotic, the third Ostraka script. Demotic, the fourth stage of ancient Egyptian, emerged in late Egyptian from roughly 700 BCE to 400 CE during the Sayite, Persian, Ptolemaic, and Roman periods, indicating changes in spoken language. Demotic was no longer written in hieroglyphs or heretic, but rather in a more cursive form of heretic known as Demotic. Demotic was initially only used for letters, legal documents, and accounts, but during the Ptolemaic and Roman periods, it was also used for literary, historical, and religious texts, with Middle Egyptian, hieroglyphs, and heretic being used only for some traditional religious texts and temple inscriptions. Coptic and Greek, the fourth Ostraka script. From roughly 400 CE onwards, the final stage of ancient Egyptian was Coptic, which was borrowed from Greek and supplanted all previous stages of the language during the early Byzantine and early Islamic periods. Coptic was written using letters inherited from the Greek alphabets and was known by the Egyptians during the period of Ptolemaic and Roman control. Coptic was used for communications, legal documents, and religious texts, some of which were translations of canonical works 
and others that preserved non-canonical Gnostic and Manichaean texts and traditions. So now coming towards the conclusion, you may have realized that the Ostrakon is the most important discovery of ancient times as it provides a complete picture of the Egyptian people's daily lives. Now, I am sure that you must appreciate the discovery of ancient Egyptian Ostrakon, and if you want more videos on the history of ancient Egypt and discoveries, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel, so you don't miss out on future videos.